common land is land owned collectively by a number of persons, or by one person, but over which other people have certain traditional rights, such as to allow their livestock to graze upon it, to collect firewood, or to cut turf for fuel. A person who has a right in, or over, common land jointly with another or others is called a commoner. This article deals mainly with common land in England, Wales and Scotland, where the extent is much reduced due to enclosure of commons from the millions of acres that existed until the 17th century. However, a considerable amount of common land still exists, particularly in upland areas, and there are over 7,000 registered commons in England alone. Historical Origins Originally in medieval England the common was an integral part of the manor, and was thus part of the estate held by the lord of the manor under a feudal grant from the crown or a superior peer, who in turn held his land from the crown which owned all land. This manorial system, founded on feudalism, granted rights of land use to different classes. These would be a pertinent rights, that is the ownership of rights belong to tenancies of particular plots of land held within a manor. A commoner would be the person who, for the time being, was the occupier of a particular plot of land. Some rights of common were said to be in gross, that is, they were unconnected with tenure of land. This was more usual in regions where commons are more extensive, such as in the high ground of northern England or on the Fens but also included many village greens across England and Wales. Most land with a pertinent commons rights is adjacent to the common or even surrounded by it, but in a few cases it may be some considerable distance away. Manorial courts defined the details of many of the rights of common allowed to manorial tenants, and such rights formed part of the copyhold tenancy whose terms were defined in the manorial court role. Example rights of common are pasture, right to pasture cattle, horses, sheep or other animals on the common land, the most widespread right, piscary, right to fish, turkbury, right to take sods of turf for fuel, common of marl, right to take sand and gravel, mast or pannage, right to turn out pigs for a period in autumn to eat mast, estoverse, right to take sufficient wood for the commoner's house or holding, usually limited to smaller trees, bushes and fallen branches. On most commons, rights of pasture and pannage for each commoner are tightly defined by number and type of animal, and by the time of year when certain rights could be exercised. For example, the occupier of a particular cottage might be allowed to graze 15 cattle, 4 horses, ponies or donkeys, and 50 geese, whilst the numbers allowed for their neighbours would probably be different. On some commons, the rights are not limited by numbers, and instead a marking fee is paid each year for each animal turned out. However, if excessive use was made of the common, for example, in overgrazing, a common would be stinted, that is, a limit would be put on the number of animals each commoner was allowed to graze. These regulations were responsive to demographic and economic pressure, thus rather than let a common become degraded, access was restricted even further. Types of common Pasture commons Pasture commons are those where the primary right is to pasture livestock. In the uplands, they are largely moorland, on the coast they may be salt marsh, sand dunes or cliffs, and on inland lowlands they may be downland, grassland, heathland or wood pasture, depending on the soil and history. These habitats are often a very high nature conservation value, because of their very long continuity of management extending in some cases over many hundreds of years. In the past, most pasture commons would have been grazed by mixtures of cattle, sheep and ponies. The modern survival of grazing on pasture commons over the past century is uneven. Arable and hay meadow commons survive in commons or almost all pasture, but in earlier times, arable farming and haymaking were significant, with strips of land in the common arable fields and common hay meadows assigned annually by lot. When not in use for those purposes, such commons were grazed. Examples include the common arable fields around the village of Laxton in Nottinghamshire and a common meadow at North Meadow, Cricklade. 
Lamas writes Lamas writes entitled Commoners to Pasture following the harvest between Lamas Day, the 12th of August, to the 6th of April, even if they did not have other rights to the land. Such rights sometimes had the effect of preventing enclosure and building development on agricultural land, enclosure and decline. Most of the medieval common land of England was lost due to enclosure. In English social and economic history, enclosure or enclosure is the process which ends traditional rights such as mowing meadows for hay, or grazing livestock on common land formerly held in the open field system. Once enclosed, these uses of the land become restricted to the owner, and it ceases to be land for the use of commoners. In England and Wales the term is also used for the process that ended the ancient system of arable farming in open fields. Under enclosure, such land is fenced and deeded or entitled to one or more owners. The process of enclosure began to be a widespread feature of the English agricultural landscape during the 16th century. By the 19th century, unenclosed commons had become largely restricted to large areas of rough pasture in mountainous areas and to relatively small residual parcels of land in the lowlands. Enclosure could be accomplished by buying the ground rights and all common rights to accomplish exclusive rights of use, which increased the value of the land. The other method was by passing laws causing or forcing enclosure, such as parliamentary enclosure. The latter process of enclosure was sometimes accompanied by force, resistance, and bloodshed, and remains among the most controversial areas of agricultural and economic history in England. Enclosure is considered one of the causes of the British Agricultural Revolution. Enclosed land was under control of the farmer who was free to adopt better farming practices. There was widespread agreement in contemporary accounts that profit-making opportunities were better with enclosed land. Following enclosure, crop yields and livestock output increased while at the same time productivity increased enough to create a surplus of labor. The increased labor supply is considered one of the factors facilitating the Industrial Revolution. Following the era of enclosure, there was relatively little common land remaining of value. Some residual commoners remained until such as after the Second World War. Lowland commons became neglected because commoners could find better paid work in other sectors of the economy. As a result, they largely stopped exercising their rights, and relatively few commoners exist today. Modern Preservation When open habitats are no longer grazed they start to develop scrub and then dense woodland, losing the grassy or heathland vegetation which may have occupied the land continuously for many centuries. In 2007 Ash Dam Forest, the Sussex heathland which was the setting for the Winnie the Pooh stories, became the center of a dispute between some local residents and the forest's governing body, the Board of Conservators, which is responsible for administering the forest's 2,400 hectares of common land. The conservators wished to restore the forest's landscape to one that predominantly consisted of heathland, its defining characteristic until the mid-20th century but something that was in danger of being lost after the Second World War as a result of the advance of woodland into traditional heathland areas, when, as one commentator stated, returning soldiers gave up trying to scratch a living out of the forest, whereas once hundreds of commoners used the wood and heath, their livestock obliging by chewing down young tree shoots. Today there is only one. Commercial grazer, the conservators were forced to intervene to stem the invasion of trees, scrub and bracken that threatened the ecologically precious heathlands, cutting down saplings, removing scrub and mowing the bracken. Some residents complained that the results looked like a First World War battlefield. This is not a problem restricted to this common. But according to Jonathan Brown writing in The Independent on 21 April 2007, similar debates are raging between locals and the authorities at other heathland areas in the New Forest and Surrey. In 2008 the Foundation for Common Land was set up in the UK to try to enhance the understanding and protection of commons.